Hi, I'm Sarah SDX, author of Don'tCookYourBowls.com, a lighthearted guide to male fertility. I've decided to travel far and wide to seek out the top experts in the field to find out what causes male infertility and more importantly, what can be done about it. Dr. Eisenberg, uh, we got on the subject of varicoceles. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I hadn't either, uh, but they're surprisingly common and a major cause of infertility in men. So I asked Dr. Eisenberg um, what causes them and what are the treatment options. Here's what he had to say. Today we are going to talk about uh, varicoceles. Okay. Um, in my research, I came across this word varicocele. It's kind of a, I don't know, a medical term. Uh, could you explain what it is? It seems like it's kind of a common thing. And Yes, yeah, it's very common. Probably about 15% of all men in this country have them. So what it is, you know, the testicles need to be below the body because they need to be a little cooler than the rest of the body. And so what can happen is some of the veins that drain the scrotum can be a little larger than average. And so that's what's known as a varicocele. And it's thought that having these larger veins, you know, does a few things. So it can impair temperature regulation, sort of the normal in and out flow uh, of blood, which can, you know, warm up the scrotum a little bit. Also can increase the pressures a little bit in the scrotum, which is also, you know, obviously going to be a problem. And then, you know, veins normally carry things away. So it carries things out of the scrotum and by kind of accumulating some of these you know, more harmful chemicals, that's also thought to be damaging to the testicles. So all those things together are thought to lead to, you know, the reason that varicoceles can be a problem. So do they, um, is it common that they impact your fertility and can you have a varicocele and not have it impact your fertility? Is it? Yeah, so again, very common in this country. Um, again, 15% of all men have it and a lot of times it's actually not a problem. So, you know, I think there's very different, um, it's sort of a bell-shaped curve probably, there's wide distribution of sort of normal testicular function. So some men are really able to compensate for, you know, having these larger veins. There's really no sort of clinical impact. But there are men that are impacted. So, you know, men that come in for infertility evaluation, probably about 40% of those men will have a varicocele. And so we do see sort of a higher incidence of men that have you know, testicular problems basically. And what's really interesting is if you look a little further, men that have something called secondary infertility, so these are men that had a child at one point, now they're trying for a second or a third and they're having problems. Um, probably about 60 to 80 percent of these men will have a varicocele. So this sort of leads into the fact that a varicocele is thought to be a progressive lesion. So it usually starts about puberty and the longer it's there, you know, the more chance it has to do harm to the testicle. Um, so we do see, you know, sort of a higher and higher incidence um, as we kind of look further along. Oh, interesting. So are there things that you can do to, to treat these varicoceles? Yeah, so they are very treatable. So if it's something that we think is a problem, and the reason we would treat it is, you know, if there's evidence of testicular dysfunction, you know, usually abnormal semen parameters, if it causes discomfort, so classic pain would be heaviness, um, you know, usually worse at the end of the day or after long standing, or um, also evidence of lack of testicular growth or even testicular shrinkage on the site of the t on the side of the varicocele. So there's kind of two main treatments in this country. So one is surgery, where you actually go in there and basically tie up all the veins, and then the other option is something called embolization, where we put little agents inside the vein to basically clot off the vein and prevent blood flow. So those are the two treatment options that we do. I see. And is it uh, one advantageous over the other? Is it more of a preference of the physician, or is it? Um... I think in terms, you know, there have not been great studies that compare them, but you know. I happen to think that the surgical option tends to be a little bit better. I think the recurrence rate is a little lower. Um, in other words, it does, the varicocele tends not to come back. So um, that is something that I prefer and I usually counsel my, uh, my patients accordingly. Are there things that can contribute to causing varicoceles or are they just kind of natural occurrences and you? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, probably nothing that a man could necessarily do that would cause it. You know, genes, as with all things, are going to be a, a big factor. So, you know, if somebody has it, you know, there's a chance that's probably a 50% chance that a brother has it or, you know, a father or son will have it. So I think that that's probably the most, you know, kind of identifiable risk factor that we can see. Okay. Um, are there ways that guys can kind of tell themselves that they might have a varicocele? Yeah, varicoceles, um, 
they can be pretty large. You could actually see it through the, you know, through the scrotum. It's a so-called um, kind of bag of worms. So sometimes you could also feel it too. So if there's anything, you know, suspicious down there, certainly you should always be evaluated. I always tell men, no one knows your scrotum better than you. So if anything kind of seems abnormal, um, you can definitely come in. But certainly sometimes uh, wives have also been able to identify them and then, you know, kind of nudge their husbands to get evaluated. Would this be, um, if you're early on in your conception journey and say it's been just a couple of months, mm -hmm. but you do notice that something's abnormal, would this be an indicator to say, let's let's go ahead and get tested earlier? Yeah, I think that would be very reasonable. You know, infertility is really defined as uh, unable to conceive after, you know, a year of unprotected intercourse. Um, and that's usually, you know, when we recommend starting to look for factors, you know, having the wife evaluated or, you know, wife or partner evaluated and also having the man evaluated. Um, but certainly, you know, there's no reason that you can't be evaluated a little earlier. So if there's anything, you know, any concern that you have, whether it be an injury you've had, you know, again, if you find something abnormal on yourself, you have a history of some medical issues you think may be, um, you know, an issue, I think that's also reasonable to get checked out a little earlier. And also, you know, I think it's very well known that you know, as we age, our fertility declines, certainly very well known for women, but also, you know, to a large extent for men as well. So, you know, kind of depending on where you are on the journey in age, I think that that also be reasonable to sort of expedite the um, evaluation a little bit. Okay. Um, so, in going back to the varicocele correction, um, if you kind of have, you have a varicocele, mm -hmm. and it is impacting your fertility. Mm -hmm. um, you can opt to, to do that or you can opt to go to IVF. Well, I know a lot of people get recommended to just mm -hmm. go to IVF and not uh, correct it. Yeah. Uh, do you, are there, are there success parameters to say that the varicocele uh, surgery is a better idea or is there, you know, things to weigh or what, what advice would you give to couples? Yeah, well, you know, having a child is a team sport. So I think that having kind of a full evaluation, a full picture, I think is very important. You know, one of the, um, Kind of key criteria is actually um, the you know the female partner's age. So if you know if she's a little bit older and IVF is going to be very likely, then I think that's a reasonable thing to do. But you know if, if everything looks totally perfect on her end, you know they're a younger couple, then I think um, you know a varicocele option is is a reasonable way to go. But also you know I think just laying out the choices for the couple and kind of letting them know all the different options and just seeing what's right for them. I think there's kind of no right answer for everybody. Right. Right. Are there um, criteria on the man's side that could uh, influence the success of the varicocele repair in terms of restoring his fertility? Because I know that it's not always, I know there's sometimes there's other issues at play mm -hmm. or, or whatnot, so are there things that you can that you can see that would say, suggest, yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna work for you? Yeah, I think that, you know, looking at sort of the parameters and where they start, you know, that does give us some indication of where they'll end up. And also just the size of the varicocele. So in general, larger varicocele does cause more problems. So those are the ones, I think, in general, that do a little bit better with treatment. But that said, even small ones, if we repair them, uh, men can benefit significantly. So I think it's, you know, a discussion you should have with your urologist. Okay. Oh, and this leads me to uh, one more uh, other question about finding a urologist. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's, it's kind of rare to, to see urologists do all kinds of things, kidney stones, mm -hmm. pelvic floor, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how can you kind of identify a, a urologist who understands fertility um, and can treat it and to you know, recognize these things, deal with varicoceles and whatnot? Yeah, well, so now um, you know, male fertility is actually, it's sort of a specialty of urology. So finding someone that's kind of been specially trained, I think, is very important because you, know, you can really bring the latest technologies and treatments to bear. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, one of the best ways, certainly the internet, you know, just kind of starting there, you can try and find specialists uh, in that regard. But also talking to, you know, to your wife's gynecologist, you know, they usually know people in the network or in the local area and your primary doctor. I think in general, you know, most, uh, you know, area physicians are fairly savvy about who's available and who's, who's there to help. So I think that's, all those are sort of good resources to use. And if there isn't in your area, if there isn't a specialist, or is there isn't one close by, what would you recommend if I do? Um, you know, that's a, a more difficult question. I think that you can talk to local urologists and see their comfort level and you know what sort of treatments they op offer. Um, but you know, it's not unreasonable, and certainly a lot of people do. You know, you know to to travel a little bit, at least for a consultation, to kind of find out. You know, to talk to a specialist to see kind of what's going on. Um, you know, there's also phone consultations that are available 
uh, by some practitioners as well. You know, what's going on, what could potentially be done to improve things, and then you can kind of decide if it makes sense, um, you know, to go see that person or kind of continue down that path. So to summarize what Dr. Eisenberg said, uh, varicoceles are very common. They affect about 15% of all men and a significant portion of infertile men. The good news is there are a, quite a few treatment options. Uh, as, as Dr. Eisenberg said, baby making is a team sport, so it's really important that you get a complete picture of both his and her fertility um, in order to make an informed decision about what treatment option is best for you. As always, uh, Dr. Eisenberg is gracious enough to be available for questions via uh, phone or email, so go ahead and contact him. And if you have additional questions, you can check out also our website, uh, www.don'tcookyourballs.com. We have a pretty uh, a rich source section on varicoceles and um, the different options that are there. So uh, go ahead and check that out. Again, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Don't Cook Your Balls Roadshow, and I'll catch you next time.